Hello everyone, welcome back to Close to Be Milkshake. I am your host, along with support puppet, Mr. Chicken. Say hi, Mr. Chicken. Yes. Do you like my new setup? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's got October 2023. Today we're gonna talk about narcissistic uh, dysphoria. This is a state of feeling very unhappy uneasy or dissatisfied. I'm going to read off a few different topics in the book Malignant Self-Love by Sam Vaknin, Narcissism Revisited. Okay. I was uh, grabbing this book. I've read it once before all the way through when I was um, not, when I didn't know who I was, and I got this book to read about other people in my life. I did not see myself at all in here. So when you say, I know who you are, I know who, we don't fucking know who we are. Okay? Okay. So later, um, when I was figuring out who I was, I started reading it again and Still, some of the things in here um, did not resonate with me until I started to self-reflect, have a few more um, relationships or mishaps or, you know, whatever going on in my life. Was I able to really connect with what he was saying in here? And now I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, here we go. So loss induced dysphoria this is the narcissist's depressive reaction to the loss of one or more sources of narcissistic supply or the disintegration of path a pathological narcissistic space this is his stalking or hunting grounds the social unit whose members lavish attention or admiration on the narcissist so sometimes um, you will also see a narcissistic person like deactivate their accounts and they're self-isolating and everything and um, they're going through this depressive state um, usually there was a triggering event whether it is a massive breakup sometimes um, people would frequent like their partners and themselves or friend groups and everything and if the friend group gets rid of um, the narcissistic person or chooses the other partner um, over them and then they you know don't have their normal source so this is going to put them in a depressive state as well um, quitting a job where they you know you guys work together things like that there's a lot of depression going on here okay all right Defin de deficiency induced dysphoria Deep and acute depression, which follows the aforementioned losses of supply sources or pathological narcissistic space. Having mourned these losses, the narcissist now grieves their inevitable outcome, the absence or deficiency of narcissistic supply. Paradoxically, this dysphoria energizes the narcissist and moves him to find new sources of supply to replenish his dilapidated stock. So this would be um, when they're, you know, done being depressed and they're like, fuck it. And then they go out and they're searching for um, new spaces, new work, new people. Okay, now I've been through this where um, I did not have backup. I did not devalue my partner um, to the end, you know, like, you know, trauma bonding things where it's like, I love you, hate you, love you, hate you, love you, hate you, you know, and then you get the, you know, hate you, get rid of them. And then you're, you know, even I will be like, I'm going no contact, I'm going no contact. And so then, um, you know, even though that I'm still in pain, I will still search out new sources so I don't 
you know, stay in a depressive state. I need attention, so I will um, give others lots of uh, attention, support, cheerlead, whatever. Um, I've I've not uh, left a partner that way and then jumped into a romantic relationship. Um, I haven't. I know that you know people have it out there you know other narcissistic people um, because I'm still grieving and these are just um, disposable people that I'm just using to buffer the pain and that's all some people will go out and um, you know just love bomb the shit out of somebody new to a, a kind of <sighs> cage a new person in moving them in, getting them pregnant or marrying them, um, thinking that this is going to make their pain go away. And those new people are gonna get it pretty fucking bad because they haven't processed their pain and so they're gonna use the new person as a punching bag for that pain that they haven't cycled through yet and grieved, okay? All right, I know that I was um, just comparing these new people to the old and they fucking sucked. Okay, all right. Next. <clears throat> all right, so self-worth dysregulation dysphoria. The narcissist reacts with depression to criticism or disagreement. Well, <laughs> yeah, all the fucking time. Ugh. Um usually anger comes out first of course <laughs> especially from a trusted long-term source of narcissistic supply he fears the imminent loss of the source and the damage to his own fragile mental balance the narcissist also resents his vulnerability and his extreme dependence on feedback from others, this type of depressive reaction is therefore a mutation of self-directed aggression. So sometimes you will see a narcissistic person, they're already in like um, a self-loathing state um, or they're either like, some of them will uh, uh, be criticizing themselves, um, something, you know, they're in a low depressive state already <clears throat> and they're going to sabotage the relationship. Um, so, and push you away. So you break up with them and then, um, you know, of course they can turn around and blame you for the downfall of the relationship. Everybody always leaves me. Okay. Um, there's also um, uh, hating ourselves, the narcissist, hating ourselves that you have that much power over us, um, that you your criticisms and everything um, can wound us so deeply. Now, when this happens with me, it's only happened in a couple relationships, um, where um, I'm going to be so hurt, um, angry, smear the shit out of you. Um, just, uh, I'm trying to be like, um, I don't need you, I don't need you, you know, which is, um, you know, I'm thinking the opposite. I wish that we could have been together or worked on things together. Excuse me, I'm burping. Um, but, then, you know, my thoughts um, also counter that, saying that there's no way that we can work things out because even if I wanted to try, the other person is not trying, you know? So, um, yeah. And, you know, our mental health thing, because I love toxic people. So our mental health um, things, some things that we cannot stop, and so if, like my last two relationships, it's like I know that um, we're not in a space to where you can save me from your mental 
issues and I cannot save you from mine. There's a lot of trust issues that, um, you know, have been smashed to smithereens throughout the relationship, you know, towards the end. Then we got grandiosity gap dysphoria. The narcissist firmly, though counterfactually, perceives himself as omnipotent, omnipotent, excuse me, I'm making up words, I'm making up words, omni, omniscient, making up words, omnipresent, brilliant, accomplished, irresistible, immune, and invincible. Any data to the contrary is usually filtered out, altered, or discarded altogether. Still, sometimes reality intrudes and creates a gra grandiosity gap. The narcissist is forced to face his mortality, limitations, ignorance, and relative inferiority. He sulks and sinks into an incapacitating but short-lived dysphoria. So this is the, um, the uh, you know, I hate myself fuck you, I'm the greatest thing, you suck, I hate myself. <sighs> so like um, in my last relationship where it was like, um, you know, I have to be perfect, perfect, I failed, I failed, shame, shame bell, shame bell, you know, all over the fucking place. And, um, and then I'm just like um, smearing the shit out of him. I hate him, I hate him. He fucking, you know, did this, that, and the other thing. And why couldn't, but, and just whatever. So that's and then um, I'm like you know I'm I'm the fucking baddest motherfucking you suck you suck so you have that you know gap where I'm fucking great gap I suck I'm great I suck okay all right don't, don't break all right self punishing dysphoria deep inside the narcissist hates himself and doubts his own worth he deplores his desperate addiction to narcissistic apply. Yes, we hate that we need you. He judges his actions and intentions harshly and sadistically. <laughs> yeah, this is where like, right? Uh, where am I? He may be unaware of these dynamics, but they are at the heart of the narcissistic disorder. And the reason the narcissist had to resort to narcissism as a defense mechanism in the first place. Yes, in childhood. This inexhaustible well of ill will, self-chastisement, Self-doubt and self-directed aggression yields numerous self-defeating and self-destructive behaviors from reckless driving and substance abuse to suicidal idealization and constant depression. Yes, it is the narcissist's ability to confabulate, make up shit in their head, fantasy land, that saves him from himself. His grandiose fantasies remove him from reality and prevent reoccurring narcissistic injuries. Many narcissists end up delusional, schizoid, or paranoid. To avoid antagonizing and gnawing depression, they give up on life itself. Now, when he says that, I don't know if he's talking about um, unaliving and stuff. Um, or we'll go into a state where we're trying to be better and then we just fall backwards. You know, um, I know that I have had these thoughts and these feelings too. It's like, why the fuck am I trying so hard when I tried really hard and fucking failed anyway? And then I was more vulnerable, insecure, all this shit um, when before... Um, I was cut off from all those feelings and I gave no fucks, none, none at all. And um, it was like a self-protection thing. And then I would just fall back into, what is that? Um, the defense of being uh, overtly uh, grandiose instead of, you know, um, overtly vulnerable because of a grandiose injury. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me, to me. All right, 
So if you guys have any questions or you have seen this um, in your people or experienced it yourself, please share with the class as always, because you know, a lot of people read our comments. Okay, okay. So that's from Malignant Self Love, Narcissism Revisited by Sam Vaknin. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Namaste.